On the 12th of October, China agreed in principle to restructure 4.2 billion US dollars of debt of Sri Lanka. One and a half months later, on the 29th of December, the official creditor committee announced that they agreed on the main parameters of debt treatment with Sri Lanka, consistent with those of Sri Lanka's extended fund facility arrangement with the IMF. In a statement, the Paris Club said that this agreement would allow the IMF staff to present the first review of Sri Lanka's EFF arrangement to the IMF Executive Board and thereby pave the way for approval of the second disbursement under the arrangement. According to the Ministry of Finance, the agreement in principle covers approximately 5.9 billion US dollars of outstanding public debt and consists of a mix of long-term maturity extensions and reduction in interest rates. The Paris Club said that the official creditor committee stands ready and awaits the formalizing of the agreement in the coming weeks in a memorandum of understanding with Sri Lankan authorities. Subsequently, Japan reiterated the importance of early completion of signing of a memorandum of understanding between Sri Lanka and creditor nations on debt restructuring after an agreement was reached in principle last year. It also emphasized the need to ensure transparency and comparability in agreements with creditors outside the official creditor committee. Japan, along with France and India, co-chaired the Committee of 15 Creditor Nations. Battling the nation's worst financial crisis since independence in 1948, Sri Lanka is trying to restructure deals with creditors after soaring inflation, currency depreciation and low foreign reserves, which sent its economy into free fall, forcing it to default on foreign debt in May 2022. According to data released by the Ministry of Finance in September last year, Sri Lanka's total external debt is estimated at 36.4 billion US dollars, which includes 10.8 billion US dollars of bilateral debt. The island nation needs to secure debt restructuring agreements with both bilateral creditors and bondholders, possibly by March, to complete the second review of a 2.9 billion US dollar bailout from the International Monetary Fund.